Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the prismatic spray uh, and the looping feature. You can see this guy here, this is a phantasmal force. This is a little MIDI controller I made. So today it's just going to be playing notes from these buttons here so that we don't just have the prismatic spray, which loves to just run constantly going all the time like this. So uh, the prismatic spray is a bite beat synthesizer, um, which means that instead of producing sound via your kind of standard waveforms like triangle or sine or saw or a wavetable um, or samples or anything like that, it just uses a math equation. And if you could see this, maybe I can zoom into it. There's a little T running across the screen. This is in the prismatic spray. This is equation zero, which is sort of a a dummy um, equation in there just to sort of uh, represent what byte beats do. So in this case, the equation is just uh, the waveform is equal to time. So as time progresses, uh, it just gets added into itself and increases by one every step, producing a ramp waveform, which sounds like this. And uh, looks, well, doesn't really look like this, but you can sort of see it there. Um, and in the case of byte beat synthesis, this is uh, once it reaches eight bits and fills that up those eight bits, it wraps around. So once it gets to uh, the number 255, it's going to wrap back around to zero. So um, it basically just keeps counting up, 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 and then goes back up, 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 up. So essentially you get a ramp, but that is not the most entertaining byte beat. So let's call up uh, my preset number 20 that I just made. I will load that, and you can see this equation is much more complex. And also, if you see it, it will have little variables A, B, and C. This is very common amongst, well, I don't know if it's common, but it's in many, many of the byte beat synthesizers that allow you to adjust the equations. They throw some variables in in interesting places and then allow you to change the value of those variables here. Um, so the interesting thing about byte beats is that some of them will play for quite some time, if not forever, without repeating themselves. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So without really any inter interaction from me, that byte beat just kind of plays a little tune, makes some percussive sounds, and it does its thing. Um, I've, and you can change the frequency uh, at which it's playing back with the blue knob here, or you can change the frequency just by playing MIDI notes into it. So. If you hold down the shift button, and you hit the yellow button, it will say MIDI t, uh, t equals zero, yes. That means every time you play a MIDI note, uh, it will reset your equation. So, you can hear it. Even though the pitch and the tempo sort of change with, uh, with the different MIDI notes, it's still starting from the same point. So let's turn that off and and essentially at this point, the byte beat will just continue to play regardless of whether I'm hitting the keys or not. And so you may catch it at different points. Which may be interesting to you or not, so I put that feature in. So let's actually switch that MIDI reset to zero on. So there, now it'll... Okay, so we are going to start our looping process here. Turn it down just a little bit. Put it into shift mode. Start our loop. Stop our loop. Okay, so you can see our little loop traversing from start to end and wrapping back around. So let's try and see what happens when we do the MIDI start and stop.
you can see it's always starting from the beginning of the loop. Um, so we can also change our start and end points of that loop. Let's go into shift mode. Here I am. Uh, it's a little arbitrary. Um, it's not super precise. It also depends on the length of the loop. So if you've captured maybe a byte beat that's going on and on and on in your loop, maybe lasts for 10 seconds or something, you're not going to have that much um, resolution when you're selecting where your start and end points are. But let's just go ahead and... And see if I have enough dexterity to do this. I'm gonna get our little loop rolling here, put it into shift mode. And so the loop. And Looper doesn't really care what equation you're on, so you can kind of skip through equations. Uh, you, uh, white and black here. And it also doesn't care about the value of your variables. And you've got your loop going all the time, and when you want to clear it out, just hit the yellow button, and that resets everything. And that's how the looper works. Uh, you'll also notice that the the start and end points kind of center around a midpoint. So that's the maximum or the minimum end point. And there's the max. And same with this side. So you really can't alter the center without recapturing the loop. Uh, unfortunately. Or fortunately. I don't know. That's just how I designed it. So there it is. Uh, yeah. So...